Ah, welcome. It is 1 o'clock on the West Coast. It is Hug Nation time all over the world, and it is Hug Nation time in your present now, whenever you are watching this and feeling and seeing and receiving and adding to this vibration, this love vibration, this connection vibration. Before we sink in, let's get present. Let's let go of the to-do lists, let's let go of things undone, and missing things, and all the stories, and just get present. Just practice getting present in this moment. Become aware of the experience of the now. Sink into your body. Put your feet on the ground. Your seat in the chair. Notice the other places in your body where you feel sensations, maybe touching the chair, touching your leg. Take a deep breath and then feel where your body has sensations in your chest and your back. Fill your air with lungs. Let go of the fact that I just said that wrong and fill your lungs with air. Thank you, universe, for all these blessings. How perfect that I missaid that and I said, fill your air with lungs. Because the topic of today is breath. And it has to do with, are you breathing or are you being breathed? So no matter how I said that phrase of filling your lungs with air, what happened was you filled your lungs with air even if I said filled your air with lungs or whatever the problem was with my phrasing. That phrasing, that communication happened in the realm of the mind, in what I have control over. I have control over my thoughts. I, nah, let me take that back. I have control over the words that I say. I have some control over my thoughts, I'm always trying to practice and have more control over my thoughts. But I have control over the movement of my muscles, my Exterior muscles, I have control over some things in my life, some things in my experience, and the words that I say is one of them, and yet I said it wrong. That didn't change the reality of the meaning, that didn't change what actually happened when we inhaled, but, which is a good segue because the thing that I want to talk about is breath. And I want to talk about how breath is a really special experience and thing because it lies in that borderlands of things that we have control over and things that we have no control over or we don't need to control or that happen perfectly with or without our control. Meaning, I talk about the words I use and moving my muscles, I can think and make all that happen. At the same time, there is tons of processes happening in my body right now that are happening without my control. I saw John Kabat-Zinn speak at Wisdom 2.0, and he said that they don't let your conscious mind, they, I don't know how he said it, he said something like, you know, the, the system is set up so that your conscious mind can't get anywhere near the processes that keep you alive. You, you're only given enough control of your organism so as to affect the way you think and move, but not keeping you alive. All of the things that happen in your blood and your your bile and your bone marrow and the, the constant battle happening with your white blood cells, all of the things happening in your body that keep you alive are done unconsciously. Whether you're asleep or awake or in a coma, all these things happen without any thought. You do not control those things. They just happen because you are a, a, a cyclical functioning entity organism that goes on and on, healing, self-healing without any thought, in the same way that the tides and the 
planets and the tree grows. There's not a, a frontal conscious thinking mind that is making sure that the branches are going towards light. But it's just magic. And we are filled with this magic. And breath is one of those places where we get to practice and become aware of that borderland between things that we can think to control and which things that we have we can surrender and are are taken care of. As I've been speaking right now, I've been thinking about the words I've been using, but somehow, magically, I've been inhaling as I do so and filling my lungs and, and replenishing the oxygen in my blood system. Uh, because that's how it works. Now, I can take a break and think about There's a few other places where you can do that with like blinking is one of those areas. To some degree, you can slow down your heart rate with biofeedback training. But breath is a really beautiful one, which is why it is used as the focal point of meditation and the focal point of yoga and becomes the focal point of that awareness or the beginning, the crack opening of that awareness of the difference between the conscious mind as being what you are and the awareness that you are actually everything else as well. You are that organism that breathes while you sleep even though you're not thinking about it. You are that system that this organism is a part of. Does that make sense? Within this community, in this city, in this planet, I am a part of that. I exist within it. I am all of those things. Just because I do not control the conscious thoughts of all the pieces of that ecosystem doesn't mean that I am not that thing. So, because at what point do you get to draw the line between what is you and what is not you? Is it the perimeter of your skin, and what's inside the skin is you, and what's outside the skin is someone else? Or is it the part of your mind that you can think about? If it's the, if it's the perimeter of your skin, then what about all of the bacterial organisms inside you that keep you alive. Is that you? Or do you have a symbiotic relationship? You can't live without it. You need all those things inside you. In fact, there was a great article I was just reading that, that prompted a lot of these thoughts. And it was about some of the consequences of bacteria use. I mean, excuse me. The consequences of an antibiotics. And without understanding the powerful role of bacteria in our bodies, we may be doing damage to things that help us. And the theory of this is that, or some of the theories are that, that even things like obesity and the rise in celiac disease, the whole gluten challenge, could be because we are damaging microorganisms, bacteria in our system that help us to have normally functioning dietary systems. A quick quote from the article in the New York Times. We may think of ourselves as just human, but we're really a mass of microorganisms housed in a human shell. Every person alive is host to about 100 trillion bacterial cells. They outnumber human cells 10 to 1 and account for 99.9% .9 of the unique genes in the body. So who are you? Is that you? If you have living separate organisms inside you, and there are living separate organisms outside you, and we are all interdependent on one another, who are you? Are you simply the perspective of your conscious thoughts and the sensation experiences that you have? I don't think so. Because who are you when you're sleeping? Who are you? You are still you. You are interconnected. The lines between outside of you and inside of you are blurry. They're arbitrary. 
to believe that because you are thinking it, that is the extent of who you are, is why we get so out of balance in terms of valuing our, the thoughts, our, our belief that we can change the world, control things, fix things, do, 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 do. When the thoughts, the mind, the conscious mind that wants to make all those things happen is such a teeny tiny player in this grand cosmic ballet that is happening all around us. All the beautiful balance and, 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 and harmony in our bodies is happening outside of that control. All of the balance and harmony in this ecosystem that we live in, in this cosmos that we live in, happens without that thought. In fact, that cosmic thought is what keeps getting things out of balance. All the pollution, all the mismanagement of, of resources, all of that happens from the conscious mind. Maybe the answer is not thinking through the problems, but the answer is surrendering to the flow. The answer is recognizing that the thoughts about the world are a novelty, are a, a, a opportunity for creative expression and, and learning and lessons, but it is not who we are. We are all of it. And when we can sink back to that awareness, we can separate ourselves from our thoughts, and we can return to that borderland of breath, we can kind of like, through the corner of our eyes, our, our conscious eyes start to become aware of that we are all of it. Who are we behind the thought? We are everything. Who are we behind the thinker? Who are we within the bacteria realm? Who are we without the bacteria realm? Are, can we exist without the bacteria? Can we exist without the external world and the cycles of water and sun and nutrients and interaction between all plants and entities and beings on this planet? No, it's all interconnected. And so focusing too much on the vantage point of what you see in the world Alan Watts talks about how the difference between God consciousness and, and human consciousness is that God consciousness is like become, being aware of the entire room at once, and human consciousness is like is like having a spotlight and being able to see one thing at a time. Humans cannot multitask. Humans can concentrate and focus on one thing at a time. We actually, he argues that we're actually better at being aware of a whole scene at, when we're born, and then we get trained to pay attention to one thing, and then we get focused, focused, focused. But the point is that to be a god, to be to have the, the power and the wisdom and the, the, the responsibility of God, you have to be able to control all things at one time. We can't even do that enough to control our own bodies. We have to surrender to God or divine or the universe or nature or whatever you want to call it. We have to surrender to it because we need something keeping control of everything within our body, keeping us alive. We need something in control, keeping control of all the cycles of the universe. So we're given this little bitty vantage point, as John Cabot said, nothing critical, nothing, just, just enough to appreciate and explore and learn and think through our challenges and, and grow. That's all we get. But it's good to every once in a while, through our breath, remember that we are all of it. You are all of it. We are one. And it is in that recognition, through the other, through the the recognition of the miracles of the tree in the eyes of your beloved or the eyes of a stranger or the eyes of a baby and you look into someone's eyes and you go ah we are all simply seeing a little piece but we are all one we are all connected thank you for reflecting that that is the namaste that is the thank you for that reminder that i am way more we are way more 
the I is way more than this little conscious ex experience that I'm having. Enjoy a conscious experience with the recognition that it is a fraction to the I. Thank you for that reflection. Let's have a hug. Grab yourselves by the shoulders. Oh. And recognize that this body does not end. It doesn't signify the end of who you are, but is a, a measuring a tool, like an inch. An inch doesn't exist except for as a way to measure things. A mile doesn't exist, it's a way to measure things. And a, a person does not exist as a separate thing except for a way to, to measure and categorize the different perspectives that are experiencing the one. We are all connected. We're all part of one system. We're all cells in this one organism. And each cell may have its own traits, but they are intimately and perfectly harmoniously connected. And so now let's have a few breaths, three breaths, with that awareness that we are all cells of this one organism, pieces of this one whole. Experiencing this breath consciously in this moment, connected to all those breathing. Maybe it's through the nose. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and all the love warriors, thank you. Happy Hug Nation. Thank you for your breath, for your thoughts, for your conscious awareness of who you are, and the deep inner knowledge that we are one. Thank you for being open to that vibration and reflecting that vibration. I love you. Namaste.